God, my back hurts. Oh, my neck oh, and my back. Recording. Shut up. The whole time? Okay. <laughs> So you find yourself needing a new roof. You've got a flat roof and you're wondering what your options are. TPO is one of the best options for a flat roof. And we're gonna show you a couple different methods of application, the mechanically attached method and the Rhinobond method. Okay, so let's talk about the mechanically attached system and what we're gonna need to do that system, drills, piranha plates or membrane plates as they're known insulation plate and then we have two different types of fasteners we'll have a number 12 and either number 14 or number 15 depending on the deck so for today's demonstration we have a wood deck so we would use a number 14 screw to hold the membrane plates and a number 12 screw to hold the insulation plates so we're going to lay out our insulation on the roof deck and then we're going to put insulation plates they're three inch galvanized plates and we're going to use a number 12 fastener to screw those down to the deck once we have the insulation fastened to the deck then we would roll out our tpo and we would put a baseline fastening pattern of every 12 inches on the leading edge of it so we use the piranha plates or membrane plates and a number 14 screw to hold that in place so once we have that first row laid in then we stretch the membrane out and we put another row of fasteners and plates to hold that tight. And once those fasteners and plates are in place, then we roll the second roll of TPO out and we spot weld the seam to hold it in place. And then we kick that roll out, stretch it, and put another row of fasteners and plates. This is a piranha plate or a membrane plate. This is two and three eighths inch diameter. This goes only on the seams and around penetrations like curbs and pitch pans and whatnot. This is the insulation plate, which is a three inch diameter galvanized plate. This is strictly for holding your insulation boards in place. So we don't use this on membrane because it doesn't have the little teeth that bite into the membrane and hold it in place. One of the main areas that you'll find mechanically attached systems are places where wind uplift is not an issue, where city code requirements do not require high wind uplift resistance. The reason being is we have 10 feet between each seam and that TPO billows up when the wind pressure goes up. It creates these big giant billows and the only points of contact are those two lines of screws and fasteners so if you're in a hurricane zone or a high wind zone you have to dramatically increase the amount of fasteners and the distance between those fasteners all right so let's go through the steps of mechanically attached attach the iso or insulation board mechanically with screws and plates and then we attach the tpo on top of that mechanically with screws and plates hence the name mechanically attached now that we have our sheets in place and everything's tacked down screwed in place now we're going to talk about the seams on a mechanically attached system there's a six inch overlap from the bottom membrane to the top and then we're going to come along with a robot welder and we set that in place and it runs along that seam and heat welds that tpo to where they melt together and they're welded watertight now for this video being it's a, such a small demonstration we did a hand welder and that's a that's a common practice for details so nobody in the comments jumped me about doing a whole roof with a hand welder we don't do that this is our hand welder. It's like a super powered blow dryer. Heats up to 600 degrees Celsius. And for people who use freedom fractions, that's like a thousand degrees. This is the hand roller that we roll the seams with while we run the welder. Another requirement for flat roofs is the taller the building and the longer the building, the shorter the sheets are around the perimeter. So on our standard one-story, two-story buildings, we have one perimeter sheet that's five feet. So that means we have a seam at five feet and then every 10 feet. So if you go up to three-story, then you have to add an additional half sheet and so forth and so on. So you can imagine it gets pretty time consuming to add all those half sheets on a very large building. The next system we're gonna talk about is a rhino bond attachment method. So before we can get started doing the rhino bond roof system, we have to do an adhesion test. So we put a plate and a screw into the roof and we take a test piece of TPO and we set it in place and we set the temperature setting on the robot and we start it. And once it beeps, we put the magnet on and we let it cool down. Once the magnet has cooled off the plate, then we try to peel the TPO off of that plate. And we should end up with something that looks like this. We had a little bit of an irregularity right here, but we should get 360 degrees of adhesion. It should actually tear the backing off the TPO. And that's how you tell that you have the right temperature before you get rolling across the entire roof and have a bunch of cold welds. It's a critical, important step to this roof system. In similar fashion to the mechanically attached, our first step is to lay out the insulation. So it typically comes in four by eight sheets and we're gonna lay those out and we're gonna put screws and plates to hold those down. But unlike mechanically attached that had a 
galvanized plate, we're gonna use a Rhino Bond plate and a fastener. We screw the boards down, then the next step, we will roll out the membrane, and instead of putting another plate and screw through the membrane, we're going to use an induction welder, a Rhino Bond machine, and that heats up this plate, and it heats the TPO up, and it melts the two together. So these Rhino Bond plates, have a special coating that's like a TPO coating that welds directly to the backside of the TPO roof membrane. And once that machine beeps, you take it off and you put the magnetic heat sink on top of it to cool the magnet down and cool the TPO down. And that creates a super heavy duty bond without the penetration of the membrane. The plate itself gets super hot, but the welder is not. It's heated by radio frequencies. And the magnet is a heat sink which dissipates the heat out of the plate so that it doesn't melt the membrane right through. So we go across the surface of the roof and we do that at each screw and plate. Once the first row is complete, we roll out the second row and repeat the same step. Put the Rhino Bond machine on until it beeps, then we put the heat sink magnet on and so forth and so on. It's a repetitive process throughout the whole roof. And then we address the lap seams, which are instead of being six inches wide, they're now three inches wide. So we've reduced the waste from 5% down to two and a half percent, just like that, because we don't have to cover up a plate with the membrane. The, the plate is underneath the previous layer of membrane. One of the significant benefits of the Rhino Bond system is the increased wind uplift capacity. When you have these plates spread across the entire roof, it uniformly distributes the wind load and increases its resistance to tear and billowing. There's another benefit of Rhino Bond. If you roll it out and you tack it down at the plates and you find you have a big wrinkle in your membrane, these plates are reusable one time that allow you to heat them back up and pull the membrane off of it, stretch the membrane out, re-roll it, and reattach it with the same plate. Pretty cool invention. One of the biggest things I see out in the field is installers don't want to use the Rhino Bond because they think it's too technical, they think it's too much technology, but it's really quite a simple system. You set that machine with the red circle on the plate, you push the button, it senses that there's a plate below it, and it starts the induction heating process. It takes about 10 seconds, and then you remove it, put the heat sink magnet, it draws all that heat out, and you move on to the next one. You get a line of magnets. By the time you're done with your sixth magnet, your first one is cool enough to take the magnet off and transfer to the next one so you can just play leapfrog with every magnet. So the benefits include less waste, far less penetrations in the membrane, thus equaling less leak potentials, and dirt simple operation. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any questions or you need help with a project, give us a call at 817-369-3600. If you're a roofer, if you're a property owner, you need some help with your project, give us a call. Remember, we service all of Texas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma. At Lifetime Commercial Roofing, we got you covered.